we're going to be looking at solving and graphing quadratic inequalities and systems of quadratic inequalities. Um, first, we're going to look at solving. And there's two ways to solve quadratic uh, inequalities. One is with algebra and one is with graphing. And we're going to actually combine that into a little method we call algebra and sketching. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of both. Uh, we find that's the, the, the nicest way to graph these. So first, we're going to draw two parabolas. There's two general parabolas. They either open up or they open down. So what I'd like you to do is draw that on your paper and then highlight where the parabola is greater than zero in one color and less than zero in another color. So I'm going to use yellow for greater than and I'm going to use green for less than. Pause it right now and shade your own graph and see if it matches what my graph is going to be. Okay, so you should have have you drawn already. We're going to graph our yellow part here is where the parabola is greater than zero. Greater than zero is above the x-axis and that would make the part down here I meant to go highlighter on that, where it is less than zero. And on the upside down graph, it's less than zero below the x-axis, less than zero is below the x-axis. Those are the two wings. And then the mound in the middle is where it is greater than. So we have greater than zero. Let's get a pen. And we have less than zero. <coughs> and the x values, we want to highlight the axis, the x values that uh, correspond to the y values. So this is an important part because this is where our solutions are going to be. So on this graph, the first graph where the graph is positive, we are positive here, and so the corresponding x values are on the outsides of the zeros or the x-intercepts. So we're going to highlight this part and this part. And then on the upside down, the zeros that are greater than are actually between my two zeros. And then the x values that are less than for the greater than graph is greater than. I'm sorry, not greater than, it's between my two x-intercepts. And then on the upside down parabola, the negative parabola, it's on the outside. So we're going to get two types of answers. We're either going to get and, we're going to get and, or, or inequalities. Okay, let's do a specific example now. Let's graph or solve x squared plus 7x plus 12 is greater than or equal to 0. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the zeros. And I'm going to try first by factoring. Uh, what two numbers multiply to 12? Multiply to 12 and add to 7. That's x plus 3 and x plus 4. I want to know when that is greater than or equal to 0. So those x-intercepts are negative 3 and negative 4. So the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a number line with my x-intercepts on it. I'm going to draw my number line, negative 3, Negative 4, make sure your numbers are in the correct order here. Negative 4 comes before negative 3. And I'm going to note to myself, open or closed circle, because these are going to be greater than or equal to. So I'm going to note a closed circle on these points. Then I'm going to sketch the parabola through my intercepts. That. 
through my intercepts and opens up if x squared is positive. That's a is positive, the number in front. I found in class today a lot of people struggled with looking at the x squared for the a. So open down if a is less than 0 or it's negative x squared or negative 3x squared. So this x squared is positive. So we're going to draw it opening up. And I'm interested where it's greater than. Greater than was my yellow. So I'm going to shade my graph here. Yellow is where it's greater than. So that's the outside x values. So these are the x values. Of, um, these are my x values that are greater than or equal to negative 3. And these are my x values that are less than or equal to negative 4. So my inequality is x is less than or equal to negative 4, or x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And that's my final answer. So 4, identify solutions. And 5, write your compound inequality. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. How about negative x squared minus 4x plus 32 is uh, less than 0. So I did greater than the last one. We'll do the last one on this, this one. So here we want to factor to find our zeros. So I like to factor out the negative first. Negative x squared plus 4x minus 32, less than 0. And that factors to x plus 8 and x minus 4, because 8 times 4 is 32, and 8 minus 4 is 4, and that's less than 0. So my x-intercepts are negative 8 and 4. So we're going to put that on our number line. Negative 8 goes before 4. And in this case, we are opening down. So my parabola goes like this. And we're going to have open circles because it's not equal to. <coughs> and we're looking at where the graph is less than 0. We used green for that. And it's on the outsides as well here that it is less than 0. So our solutions are x is greater than 4 and x is less than negative 8, not and or. So we have x less than negative 8 or x is greater than 4. And then let's look at 1. Um, x squared minus 3x minus 4 is less than 0. And at any point in time, you're welcome to pause it, do the problem yourself, and see what you get. So this factors to x minus 4 and x plus 1, numbers that multiply to 4, numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to negative 3. That's less than 0. My x-intercepts are 4 and negative 1. So we'll draw that number line, 4 and negative 1. What did I do wrong? That's not where those numbers go. It's negative 1 and 4. So make sure you put them in the right order. <coughs> And then my x squared is positive, so it's going to open up. So opens up through my, and I want to know where the graph is less than 0. Again, on this one, less than is below here, which is between the numbers of negative 1 and 4. And these are open circles, so it's just less than. So we have negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 4. That's how we write our ands. Okay, the ands can be written as one sentence, and the ors have to be written as two separate inequalities with the word or between them. Okay, now we're going to look at graphing systems of quadratic inequalities. We're basically going to graph two inequalities on the same coordinate plane. Y is greater than x squared minus 9, and y is less than or equal to 
negative x squared. plus 3x plus 4. <coughs> now there's several ways to graph. Um, these are in standard form, so we would find the vertex and make a table. Standard form. If it was vertex form, you also find vertex and make a table. But vertex form gives you the vertex. And then the last one was intercept form. In which we would find the x-intercepts and then find vertex. Now I've always liked the um, intercept form better than other forms. So I would choose to do that over anything else. If I can factor the quadratic, then I can put it in intercept form and graph it a lot faster. So you're welcome to use any method, but I'm going to show you how to factor it and then graph it. So y is greater than x minus 3, x plus 3. This is a difference of squares. We should recognize that off the bat right away, that it's a difference of squares and it's factorable. And this one is also gives me the vertex when I look at it, because in standard form it has no B term. So this one turns out really nice to graph. My x-intercepts are 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. And halfway in between 3 and negative 3 is my vertex. So remember, my vertex is halfway between my x-intercepts. <laughs> so that's 0. And when I plug in 0, 0 squared minus 9 is negative 9. So my graph is at 0, negative 9. <coughs> and it's going to be greater than. So I'm going to find both sets of information, and then I will put it on a graph. Um, the, this one, to, gra to factor, I'm going to factor out the negative. So negative x squared minus 3x minus 4 less than or equal to y. y is less than or equal to that. And that's x minus 4 and x plus 1. So that gives me x-intercepts of negative 4 and positive, I'm sorry, positive 4 and negative 1. Halfway between there, I can find that by adding 4 plus negative 1 and dividing by 2. And that's 3 over 2. That's the x value of my vertex. <coughs> And I can plug that in to find my y value, 3 halves minus 4 times 3 halves plus 1. This is 2 and 1 half, negative 2 and a half, and this is 2 and a half, which is negative 2.5. Sorry, it becomes positive. Negative, negative makes that positive. 2.5 times 2.5 is 6.25. Or if you put it in fractions, we have 5 halves times 5 halves, which is uh, 25 fourths, which again is 6 and a fourth. So this vertex is at 3 halves, comma 6.25. And the other information we need to look at is we have open and um, not dashed, dashed and solid because they're inequalities. This one's greater than, so we're going to shade up. We're going to shade up, and it's going to be dashed. In this one, we're going to shade down because it's less than, and it's solid. So let's see if we can remember all that for the next slide here. OK, so the first equation was y greater than x squared minus 9. That had x-intercepts at negative 3 and positive 3, and it had 0, negative 9 as my uh, y-intercept, and we said it was dashed. And we shade greater than, up is greater than, so we're going to shade inside the parabola.
And then our second equation was negative 1 and positive 4 were my intercepts. And I had 1 and a half and 6 and a half. 6 and a quarter, sorry. And this was solid line. And it was shaded down, which is also inside. And then the solution of a system of inequalities is the overlap of the shading. So we're going to make this really clear that the overlap is this area dashed, dashed, solid, right where all the shading overlaps and all of the points that are in there are solutions. Remember that points that are on the dashed line, if they're on the dashed line here, they are not a part of the solution. Only points on a solid line are part of the solution.